Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach, and mindful coach. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle It's been a couple of weeks. We haven't done a Freestyle Thursday, and it feels good to be back in front of the mic, and a lot of things have been happening here. New Year's is closing down. I guess, not New Year's. 2020 is closing down. New Year's is coming. (laughs) Um, You you know, and and obviously, people are getting ready for the holidays. Christmas is coming pretty soon. Um, And I guess holidays is different this time of year as far as usually it's people happy, people are traveling, people are going places, but I guess with the whole pandemic and uh, so many states been shut down. Everybody's just at home, and I'm at home shooting this podcast with Gloria. And th- to me, this is this is great. I mean, I'm at home. I'm actually looking at my window at a beautiful lake. It's fresher outside. I mean, Washington rains as always, not always, but rains definitely winter time. But it's great to, to be back on the mic and talking to you guys out there. And man, it's it's really good to you know what the, the beautiful I like about Freestyle Thursday is that. It allows us to vent our frustrations for, I guess, the week or the month or whatever's going on in life or just that minute before we hop on the podcast. The same thing with you guys, you know, it, it allows you guys to hear what we go through. We're just like you. We're just human beings facing our own dilemmas, our own frustrations. And more importantly, what's great about Glory and I is that we've done a lot of significant work on finding out for us how to navigate our own emotions. You know, um, before we got on this podcast, I was just talking about she had to follow up, which I appreciate about my divorce. And I've talked about this several times on the podcast. And you know what you got? You got to look at, I guess you call it a silver lining or you got to look at the flip side of something. I never realized and heard for so many years that people get divorced. It could be very nasty, meaning that there's a lot of money involved. Kids are involved. You know, it doesn't matter. Each situation is different. And, but I always hear, oh, yeah, it takes six months to a year or maybe longer. I'm like, wow, for divorce? I mean... Because I'm thinking about my case. My, my divorce is like 13 years old, filed. So it's, it's all filed, okay? Because I haven't got the stamp from the judge. And I'm still going through it. I just can't believe that we have no kids, no assets, no 401k. I haven't seen her like 13, going on 14 years. Um, I had to go through almost online to find her from the first t- step. You know what? You, you never know what someone's going through. And in my case, I'm just waiting for one one, as an uno, dos, whatever you want to say, paperwork to be signed so I can move on with my life. I can move on with my future. I can move on what I want. It's off my plate. It's off my list. It's out of my mind. I'm <laughs> out of there. And it's just, in, in this case, I can't get the sign. I mean, it's very funny. I'm, I'm, I'm almost calling every hour and sending texts saying, hey, look, have you signed it? What do you need? Do you need the help? What's going on? I, I'm just... I have my wits in right now and I'm just, you know what, I, I got to guess to take a break. But, you know, when frustration really gets in your way, it's really hard to sit there and take a break because I'm frustrated because this thing should be done. And we hired an attorney or paralegal. You got to pay, you know, they get paid for their time. And every minute that they have to send an email out or create documentation, it's a minute you have to pay out of your pocket. Right. So 
But this, I have no idea what's being so dragged on, you know? And I, I guess that's got, I got to go through it. That's, that's, that's my biggest. I mean, Wednesday night, I'd say Tuesday night, I can sleep all night long. I went to bed at about 9, woke up at 10-something, woke up at 12-something, woke up at 2-something. I'm stressing about, you know, uh, you know these fees for the attorneys. Attorneys add up pretty fast. I mean, you got to realize, send an uh, email back and forth, depending on attorney, can be 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. It can be simple as, I want to follow up my case. Are your case still pending? That's 60 bucks right there. That, that that's it could be simple as that you're, you're 60 bucks and um you know and the money I, they're spending communicating with me i'm spending communicating with them back and forth then trying to follow up with her you know in this case and then what the frustrating part is i'm paying for all this out my pocket i haven't asked her for a dime a cent all she has to do is open a smartphone or a computer because of COVID and sign online we don't have to go to court like that's how really easy it is and I'm even following up to ask, what the hell is going on? Are you okay? Do you need some help? What, what's happening? Still no response. <laughs> no, the time I called two days ago, she picked up. I don't think she knew it was me or not. And I'm like, hello. And hi, hi, so-and-so. I can't say her name on the mic. Hey, uh, I just want to follow up. You hear a dog barking in the back. Grant can barely hear. She says, let me call you back. That's going back. Yesterday, I called. Someone picks up the phone, which is probably her. No, no, and they hangs up the phone. So I'm just like, at my end right now. I'm just, I'm just. I guess I should just let it, let, let, let it lay low for a couple of, a couple of weeks, a couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm gonna give one last time, and hopefully she answers or responds. <laughs> you know, I sent a text out like two minutes ago. I was like, "Hey, look, um, have you signed paperwork yet? Don't you want this thing to be over and done with?" Because I mean, most people want this thing to be done with. I mean, what's what's the holdup? I, I don't know. So. It's, That's it's my unboxing tough. for <laughs> for this week. I mean, every week can be something totally new, but that's my unboxing for this week. Um, Christmas is coming. I'm very excited to see what kind of presents I may have gotten. Um, <laughs> and I've been spending last, you know, I, I'm moving in the fish tank. So I, this place, this um, website called um, o- Ohio Fish Rescue. So fish tanks is, you know, they have these massive, I've never seen a property, never showed a video of it or I haven't found it yet, but it's massive home aquariums you're not it means the fish are just huge i mean they're not your typical couple of inches at home they can be up to three or four or five feet long i saw a video today that electric eel that was three feet long that's huge that's huge in a home aquarium but obviously these people are professionals that's what they do but it's it's wow that's what i want i want a, I want a monster tank so enough about me gloria what's going on with you how's your week going well, before me, I was um, I was kind of biting my tongue here, so I wanted you to finish. Um, I, you know, this about this whole divorce thing. I was just thinking, there's a light to all of this. You know, there's going to be a light to all this. Um, it made me think about my cousin, and I think I've mentioned this to you. She's in a different country, so she's in Japan, and she it was going through the same situation as you are, is just trying to get the paper signed, trying to get the divorce done. And, you know, I don't, I can't remember how long she was married to the guy, but the process of getting the annulment. So they got married in the Philippines and then they, they're both in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then when they split up, God knows where the guy is. She doesn't know, has no idea. They both have moved on pretty much. But, um, in, you know, in the Philippines, they don't have like we have here divorces, right? It's annulment. So the annulment can take a long time. And even her going through that experience, she didn't realize it was going to be that long. And it's this annulment had been going on for years. I, I can't even tell you. Not not a couple of years. It's more than that. I, I don't know how long. So she's gone back to the Philippines um, a few times because she has to appear in court. Um. And I remember she, they didn't know where to find the guy. <laughs> they don't know where he is. They couldn't find an address she had to hire. So mind you, she's paying for everything just like you. Okay, the guy doesn't have to. She, he, the guy hasn't spent. So has to hire an attorney, has to hire um, an FBI. FBI? Well, is it FBI? I don't know. But someone to figure out where he is and look for him. Oh, private, a PI, private investigator, that's what I think, right? Yeah. Okay. That. And, and, um, the FBI has got one for something. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> but um, they had to um, to you know, figure out where he is because they need to deliver the paper for him to sign, right? 
Mm-hmm. So they, um, I think at one point they did, and he had to, they both had to go back to the Philippines to appear in court, which that happened, but they, it happened a separate time. So they never really got to see each other. So now years later, she's going back to the Philippines in January um, to appear in court. And as far as I know, this is a final. So she's very, very happy. She said, it's finally going to be done. This is it. And then she she can move on freely. Did they find a guy or, or what? Yeah, they did. They eventually did. And that's how they were able to, you know, move move past through all this. But just not only find once they found him, it was it wasn't easy trying to get him to sign the paper either. It was another process of him ignoring it, <laughs> him putting it on the side. And it, all he had to do was sign a paper. Here you go and mail it back. You know, it makes you wonder, you know, and we we're talking about this earlier. She he's moved on clearly. She's moved on clearly with their lives, right? Well, obviously as far as she's concerned, she's moved on. And wherever he's moved on or not. But I guys, I, I mean I mean anybody with some kind of level of intelligence, it's like this. Someone says, Hey Ron, you know what? You get this million dollars right here. All you do is sign the dotted line right here. And I get the million dollars, tax free? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you think I'm not going to sign for the million dollars? I mean, that's very straightforward. I mean, here it is. She paid for everything. She's flying back and forth for two different countries. I mean, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. I mean, the plane tickets, a hotel. Oh, Hope yeah. she was able she to, was to working, stay with people. Yeah, she was working her butt off. Like, she was working double jobs, like two jobs just to, I need money because then now I need to go back to the Philippines again and just filing everything and paying, you know, and I understand the whole lawyer thing because I was hearing, I heard this from her too, in, in your case, you know, it can cost a lot of money for just a, sing, a single phone call for like a minute or two, you know, or just emailing them. It, it can cost, it adds up, everything adds up. It did, but I, I don't understand this guy's intelligence. She's moved on. You moved on. Let's say you can't decide the dotted line and be done with it. Like, aren't you tired? Uh, I mean, if, 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 if they have to hire a private investigator or whatever it is, aren't they tired of someone hunting them down or then hiding or they get a random phone number they don't recognize, they don't answer, someone's in a voicemail, they don't know? I mean, don't you get tired of that? Because obviously you know someone's looking for you. Someone has at this point has told you, hey, look, Bob, we're, we're looking for Bob. And your friends have told you, someone has called you, someone sent you emails, something has happened. Aren't you ready to be like, oh, I'm done? I mean, anybody with any kind of intelligence, and obviously we talk about cases where not a lot of things are involved. If someone's been married for 20, 30 years, you probably got a lot of assets involved, you got 401k plans involved, you got kids involved, you're probably grown by then. You got a lot. Of, okay, so it could be a, 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 a hard process, but mine, nothing involved. Yours, nothing involved. I mean, your cousin's nothing involved. You see, you see the frustration in my voice. Why the hell are you holding on? Like, what, what, what is the purpose? Don't you want to get mm-hmm. it done? Right. But the reality is, though, they haven't done any internal work. Like, because they didn't sign a dollar line on time, it's not just that, the divorce. It's everything they do in their life. Like, it, it's not, it, it doesn't equate to just this one scenario. It's how they do anything is, is how they do everything. So how they treat the divorces, in my case, your case, is how to do everything. So that's not something new. So, so I, you know, thinking about it, I can't really be upset. I'm going through something that I already knew. I was hoping it would be different. But the way someone does anything is the way you do everything. That's just the rule of life. So how I'm going, that's how she does everything in life. I, I, I told you before, when we got on, before we got on the podcast, another scenario where I, when we first got together, moved from San Diego to Northern California, out the blue, a guy calls me up and says, hey, I heard you and so-and-so have gotten together. Um, I say so-and-so, that means the name. I can't say the name. I would love to. But they're not here to defend themselves, so I don't want to say it. He calls me and says, hey, this person owes me money. I'm like, I have no idea. And so we moved here. She owed somebody money. She basically didn't answer the phone call, didn't receive the text, didn't call back. They didn't call my my office phone at my job looking for her. So way to do anything is way to do everything because... She put that off. The dude calls me. Then I'm saying, what the hell? You owe this guy money? How much do you owe him? So that's so way do anything is way do everything. Mm-hmm. But in this case, you know, I, I want to move on my life. The attorney wants to move on. I mean, seriously, the attorney wants to move on themselves. Like, look, 
I don't understand what's going on. I want to move on because, you know, Tony has other other cases and things that to finish too, right? They would close this out because they have other things that. So the Tony is not. I don't know if the attorney has 100 cases or two cases, but eventually you want to close something out and move on. But, you know, that's just the way we face right now. Right? So it makes you want to even want to get married. No, hold on, no, 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 sorry, sorry. Let me take that back. Yes, you want to get married when you have done some real internal work. When you really have looked at some features about a person that make you happy. When you understand a person's integrity and values. Then you want to get married. I got married on the premise that she was an older woman. Sex was good. I thought that the only way to keep her from cheating on me or to keep her around because I want the great sex was to marry her. And that proved to be nothing. So I didn't look at, I didn't do no internal work. She didn't do no internal work. I didn't, I had no idea what her values were. So if you asked me today, I wouldn't have no idea. We didn't even spend any time together before we got married. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm going to keep her and we do anything I can, anything I takes to keep her, right? That's just my personality. If I want something, I want it bad. And whatever it takes, I'll get it done. But that's what it, that's what it boils down to. So if you don't get married, you got to do some work. Do the internal work. So hire a coach, hire a therapist, whatever you do. And look at the value system of that person. What are your intentions? My intention was to have great sex. <laughs> look where it got me, nowhere. You know, it's not just about like, okay, thinking about, do I want to think about getting married or not. How about just even getting into a relationship? You know, yes. um, it's, it's a lot of these could be a lot of work. Yes. Um, being married could be a lot of work and splitting, getting a divorce could be a lot of work because there's a lot more things behind all that, you know, the documents. And then if you have kids, if you have a home, you know, but it's not just that it's about also being in a relationship with that person. You know, but maybe back then, like we said, you never had internal work even before. So you don't know. And at that time, you were just looking at one thing. I, I think she's the one. And a lot of people usually make that assumptions. I don't want to say a mistake because you know what? In every relationship you've gone through or even marriages that that didn't work out, let's just say that wasn't a mistake. It was an experience. And you've learned your lesson from that, you know, because a lot of the times we tend to jump into something without thinking. So we're going by, we feel, I feel like this person's the one I want to marry this person. I feel like this person loves me and he's taking care of me or that he's giving me everything I want. He, he's the one for me and I, I love him, but do you really love this person? Or are you just blinded by how this person is treating you for the moment? Because all that can change. There's what we call a honeymoon stage. A honeymoon stage is only in the, in the very beginning of a relationship. And the person's true color, colors doesn't come out until later. Could be two months later. It could be three months later. It could be a year or a couple of years later is when you find that person, the real person that you're with, or, you know, you're dating. You know, here it comes down to one simple factor is people come in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. That's it. Mm -hmm. There's no other four fifth category or, or both. You can't straddle the fence. It's the reason, a season, or a lifetime. And what we already what we tend to make the mistake on is we don't set what we our intentions are. The intention can be, let's say, I want to find this person. They treat me really well. They're attractive. They have a nice car. They have all this great stuff because we don't have it. So we end up finding someone that compliments us in a lack of something. Like you see the woman, not 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 trying to say all women, but you see a woman that finds a guy that has a lot of money because she wants a guy to take care of her because she can't take, can't take care of herself. Not saying she can't. Or you get the guy that says, okay, I'm going to try to take care of a woman because I have a lot of money, but the woman can take care of herself. See, we get to the point where we're not setting ourselves up for success. What we're doing right now is really just setting up momentarily feelings. The momentarily, okay, they treat me well. They're nice. They're attractive. Th those are momentarily. Because what's for sure is in life anything's a change for, for sure in life life is a change things are constantly changing your wants or needs are different than your wants or needs two months ago or three months ago or six months ago or, or five years ago 
So because of that, even in a relationship, you're constantly changing. But if you haven't figured out the values of your values or your intentions or how you perceive this person, how they operate. What do you see the future at? You know, five, 10 years down the road, it's going to be for a disaster. Mm-hmm. And you know what? See what you, oh, go ahead. What I, when I was dating out there a long time ago, what I tend to do is, let's say, this is a dumb example, not a dumb example, but example. What I would do is I'll go to a restaurant, right? Let's say a bar. And what I used to do is I would sit there at the bar and let's grab a drink, right? So I said, hey, let's go grab a drink. And then we go to the bar and I order my drink, but I want to order. And then she would order her drink. And I just sit there and wait and look and see how many drinks do they really have? How many glasses of wine they really have? And can they hold the alcohol? It just got, it, it showed me the character. That's all what the purpose was. Obviously, I can define it now, but back then it was to see who they really were, but it really is to see their character. But really it was to see if I would like to date this person because how they behave, be it if they're intoxicated or not, is tend how they usually behave. Now, we're all great at putting up a facade. We are great at putting up a good picture from the first from day one, but eventually we're going to default to who I really are. So getting a person less a little buzz or whatever because we're both are drinking, it allow me to see the real character and now tell me if I want to be this person or not. That's when they say the truth comes out when you're drunk. <laughs> it comes out when you're drunk. Because yeah. by, by human nature, we live by a set of rules. I always call it a set of defaults. Okay. All of us put a limit on ourselves, regardless of it's business, career, success, whatever, we put a limit on ourselves. So a set of rules that say, I can't do this because of X. I can't do this because of Y. So that is our default. So until you've done some real internal work or hire a coach or really figure out what you really want and your character, we all would default back to what we know. So if a person is drunk, they're going to default back to who they really are. That, that could be so simple as this. So what I would do is if they would look at the bill, so if the bill would come, let's say, and if they, they didn't offer the half, they didn't offer the tip or I didn't look at the bill, I'm done. Because at that point, I was tired of being the point, the, the guy that's always paying, always paying, always paying. I just really got frustrated with that because it shows me that my money is not important, that you don't care the fact I have to work. You know, if the bills that say 60 bucks or $30, whatever it is, that costs money. I have to put hours in to earn to pay for this bill. So if you didn't set those, let's say, three parameters I set for myself, you yourself didn't tell me who you really are, character. And that's what boils down to a character. What, what are you, you're not dating a person. You're dating a character or the characteristics you're dating. And you have to figure out if those characteristics work well in your life. Like I meet someone and they're like, oh, well, I, I smoke weed on a regular basis. That has worked for me. Have a nice day. That, that, I'm okay with saying that. That's a character. They just want to smoke weed. Cool. That's worked for me. Great. I move on. We can be friends, but I move on. Your turn, Gloria. You can talk now too. Um, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to add to that. that it's not just, you know, relationship, like dating or having significant other kind of relationship. We're, I wanted to add about friendship as well. Yes. Because it, it does happen with, you know, when you have friends, you know, you've heard of the terms, uh, the term friends come and go, Right which is true. And I am speaking from an experience because a lot of, I mean, I love, I love to meet people. I love to make new friends, but there's just sometimes if I just have no chemistry, I don't have chemistry with you. I don't know if I will hang out with you again. And usually just like dating, right? You, you can kind of tell after, you know, I'm um, hanging out with that person once or maybe the second time. You know, and, and sometimes you can kind of tell and get a feel of how this person will be. Will this person be cool to hang out with? Will this person be a good friend or not? But I like to give people chances um, because I don't, I'm not going to lie. I do judge sometimes, but I, most of the time I do like to give people chances because sometimes I could be wrong by their, you know, if, if I feel like this person might not be a good friend. I could be wrong about that. I don't know because I've never given a person a chance. So I give them a chance and then, you know, and I've had friends that that came 
and went. I've had friends who I've became close to or close with that came and went. But it just kind of fade. It just faded. You know, it wasn't like, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean something had happened be- between us or between all of us, but it, it was just, it just kind of faded that way. Meaning that maybe this, the friendship just wasn't meant to last long, but there was a reason for that person coming into my life. And there was a reason for me coming into their lives. And, yes. you know, yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. I mean, what we're talking about is relationships and you're not for sure how, you know, relationships doesn't have to be just dating somebody. They can be friendships. They can be coworkers. They can be any or relationships, anything, anything you want to be, it can be a relationship. So that, that makes a big deal how you behave in, in any relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, I always say you always give a person time and you always give a person time for true characteristics to show up or show out. And you got to figure out if that really works well for you or does not. Don't always cut a person off just from the very beginning. You never know what you may be getting out of that or how they are as a person or what you can learn. So let's say the other day um, I had a call. Okay. So I think I told you a story. So I had someone call me, actually someone messaged me on Facebook and um, they said, Hey, I see you graduate IPEC. I said, yeah, graduate IPEC. You know, I, I was a student there for coaching. Their response was, oh, okay, um, you know, once you graduate and all this stuff, how's it going? I said, great, great. Would you like to connect? Okay. So I'm thinking, okay, here's another coach. They want to connect, right? Great. Mm-hmm. So we set up a call. We uh, connect. The first call was, hey, who you are? And obviously I'm spending the first, you know, the call's like 20 minutes long. I'm talking about myself, what I do. Um, and then at the end, it's like, oh, you know, I see your, would, would you like to have a, of a value? Okay. Value make it layman's terms is yes, selling is a value, value selling, right? So I say, yeah, you, want, you have something to share. That's great, right? Because that's how information really exchanged through life is through the sharing, okay? You're not getting, you didn't get anywhere in your life without someone helping you. So if you think you got where you are now, someone along, along the way shares some information with you or taught you something and made you learn something, okay? So I'm like, okay, let's book a call. Let's book another call. And through time before the call, I'm thinking to myself, is he trying, what, what, are we, what are you doing here? I'm really confused. You know, it's like a s- selling, Right. That's how I look at it. So we get on a call and this past this week and um, we get to talking about, you know, the funnels and lead generation, all this stuff like that. And in the middle of the call, I'm like, hey, buddy, you know, I'm really lost here. I'm and I actually I'm really perplexed. Are you trying to get to know me? Or are you trying to sell me something? I, I'm really lost here. What's happening? And he says, hold on. What do you, what do you mean? I says. So when you messaged me on Facebook, this is my response to him. I always thought you wanted to connect as a person connecting, right? We're just connecting. I didn't realize I was going to get a call and talk about lead generation on LinkedIn. I don't, I don't know what <laughs> I want to do. I, I, I just want to be honest. Look, I don't know what the hell is going on here. I just don't want to be involved in. And because it, it wasn't up front. See, so, see, when it came to this particular situation, I said, look, you know, you didn't ask me my why or my need. So for me to convert to a program you're trying to present in front of me, it's going to be zero because you didn't find my need and my why. So point of me telling you the story is even though I didn't buy his package because I didn't see the need because I already was doing something else, but I learned something. I learned how to do up work. I learned how to do my own lead generation if I ever decide to do that myself, right? So what it is, pretty much lead generation is this. You have a LinkedIn profile, okay? You go to Upwork, which obviously is United States or local or global. Someone then you pay whatever it is, one buck an hour or hundred bucks an hour, whatever you're doing, you give them a format or outline and they reach out to those people. So if you ever get, you know, LinkedIn sends you, hey, my name is Rachel. I like to connect. And at first, we all think, oh, that's cool. That person wants to connect. No, it's a lead generation person. It's not them sending an email. It's someone else sending you the email. So, but that's how they do the process. The process is if I send out a thousand emails a month, out of a thousand emails, let's say, 1% I can get on a call. That's 100 people, right? Out of that 1%, I can get people to convert. That's 10 people I've gotten now paying clients. I only spent, let's say, 200 bucks getting them. But that's the numbers game, right? 
but you got to constantly do that every single month. So the point is, I learned some of this conversation, even though I did not converse. So every time you're going to get in a relationship with somebody, you know, it may not be work out the way you want to or they want to, but you do learn something in the process out of that relationship. So true. Certainly true. And, and you know what? And what I love about this too, um, within the past year also, is that um, we've we've been doing a lot of work. I've, I'm still doing a lot of work on myself as well. Um, but I have also connected with a lot of wonderful people, like wonderful people. I can't even stress that enough. And that to me, it just, it just feels so good to, to have met a lot of the people that we have met, not only through the podcast, but like just connecting with them through social media and, and just constantly be in contact with them, you know? And I think it's, I think it's what we call like connecting with like-minded people, right? I think it's a lot more too of people who really understands you and, and just, just understand you and accept you for who you are. That's the main key. I don't think you can always accept everybody for who they are and what they are. That that's that's I think we as a civilization we haven't got that far yet. Uh, hopefully, next two, three, four, five million thousand years we'll get there. <laughs> because we're we're not there. We're just we're not as civilization of that acceptance because everybody has a different journey, different opinions, different lifestyle, whatever. Right? We're not at that state yet, but it's getting better. But it's not going to be with everybody. You know, it's maybe not accepting, but how about understanding, understanding the other person, right? Because I've gone through that where certain people, I don't understand. I don't understand their behavior. But now, you know, after working internally, what, like what you said, I have that. I have that little bit of understanding of why certain people are the way they are, the, the behavior that they have sometimes that I didn't understand before. And now instead of judging them, I get something out of it, you know, maybe be curious about them because not knowing that they could actually be going through something, that's why they would be acting a certain way or that's why they are who they perceive to be they are from the outside. But deep deep down there's, there's something else is in there. Something else is go, is happening inside. So, and know. that's what I'm trying to say is that all of us haven't reached a state of understanding just yet. So you reach a state, a state of understanding, you reach a, a state of, an, of acceptance. Most people say get an argument, right? One person has an opinion about something. Let's say politics, right? One person is a Republican, one person is a Democrat. They say their opinion about who they're going to vote for, what they believe in, right? But no one has stated the understanding. Oh, well, he, they... they so and so does have our the Republican does have a point, and same thing with the Democrat do have a point. I now understand where they're coming from. Most of the time, it's I'm gonna stick with my opinion and what I believe in because it's what I believe in, and forget about what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I will say consciously, we're getting better. It's gonna take more time, more years for us to get to the next level mm -hmm. of true acceptance. Yep, it's going to take some time, and only and. That too has to also come from within. So if you work on yourself, also. That's true. You gotta, it starts with you. The, the main thing to consider when going through life is any changes, any solutions that you want to have or challenges start with you. When you can convert the solution or challenge into something much better, it starts with you. Everything always, always starts with you. It always does. And, you know, and, but other than that, I'm just, you know, I'm, we're a couple of weeks out before this year ends. I'm excited, I'm looking forward to just move on and just move on from 2020 and just starting, start a new year. I'm excited. I have this exciting feeling for this coming year. Um, I don't know what it is yet, but it's, it's, it's a feeling that I have. I'm, I'm very excited. So I'm looking forward to 2021. Um, and, you know, with the holidays coming up and then we have our summit coming up. It's just, there's a lot of exciting things happening for me. It's, I'm not looking forward so much more on, you know, like when I was younger, I can't wait till, till Christmas, you know, from all the gifts I'm going to get, right. What am I getting 
um, from my friends or my family. This year, I think, or in the last, um, for me at least, in the last several year, several several years had changed, you know, and even more so this year that I don't, um, I'm I don't expect gifts. I think I'm more giving than receiving, if anything, and I feel so much more love when I give. So I I give love. That's my present to everybody. My love. I spread my love. It's 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 more fulfilling for me. Mm-hmm. And just and then you know the the little things. If I do receive gifts, it's just it's the little things. Even just a a simple note. You know, I was reading um, last night. I was reading all the messages that I got from the students and the parents. And I spent the time just sitting there reading all these emails and the appreciation. And even just those simple notes like that, like a one sentence, just means so much to me. That's where I feel so much more love that, you know, I not only do I feel like appreciated, I, I feel that I know I'm doing, I'm doing something good and I'm doing something right to somebody else out there. Or I'm making a difference. That's what it is. That's the word I was looking for, that I know I'm making a difference. And when I do, it's a very fulfilling feeling for me. And so, yeah, this year, it's it's been a tough year for many, for most of us. But I can't say it's been one of the toughest year for me. It actually, um, the pandemic had done some wonderful things for me, aside from, you know, being a weird year, right? Um, and which is preparing me for the next year or so. I think that's what it did to me too. Unfortunately, there is, there was some loss. Obviously people lost their lives during the pandemic. Uh, There was a lot of upheaval as far as, you know, Black Lives Matter and various different things from there. Um, The election uh, has just been uh, just a tumultuous year, a lot of different emotions, things happening, but there's also good in that if you look for it. If you look for good, you'll see it. For me, this year has been one of where I have pretty much really focused on what I want to do for the next 10 to 15 years of my life. Um, I'm focusing on who I'm going to help and what, what service I'm going to do it. And it now allows me time, especially what shelter in place is now to focus on my business. I mean, we're at over 3,000 downloads for this year. We, we're only thinking about 1,000 for the year, right? Because you know how this thing really worked. I know. And we're, we're double that, right? So, I mean, and it would only get more exciting and to bring more life into those, right? So my dream is bring, breathing life into me. And by my service, I'm going to bring breathe life into somebody else. And that's how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get it done. And mm. we got our virtual summit coming up in, in next week. And, yes. you know, three days. Uh, we finally got a, a guest coming. We got people signed up. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Um, You know, I can't wait to do it in person. And I visualize myself uh, being Eric Thomas doing, maybe not him because he has the personality, but doing something like that. We motivate young people and motivate because it really starts from a younger age. Now, granted, you can get old and change, but you go to, you go to a funeral and you see a lot of regrets. Go, go to a funeral. Go to a graveyard. You see a lot of regrets. You hear about a lot of regrets. Oh, man, so-and-so, he he's a good person. Man, he's had more life into him. Or I wish I could have done this. Go to an old folks' home. They, they're 80 years old, but, man, if I had only had done this at 40, you know, if I made a better decision at 40, I, I thought I know what I know now. Don't know what you know now. Do what you know is right for you now. Again, don't don't think about what you know after the fact. Do what you know now, because now is the time, and get it done. So, it's been a journey for me this year. I'm happy where I'm at. I hope it will get better. Actually, no, it will get better. Universe have to say will because hope is something's going to be different. I have faith it will get better. And for those out there that will miss or will join our virtual summit, we're, Gloria and I will be doing a summit every single month. You guys have a right to get help, and we're here to help you. And you know what? Thanks for listening to another Freestyle Thursday. This is Ron Johnson, your life coach, leadership coach, and motivational speaker. And you know, the wonderful thing about having this virtually is that anybody from anywhere can join. So I 
did. Um, I think we have someone signed up out of this country for our upcoming um, summit. And that's just an example. So anybody can join from anywhere. Um, and, and yeah, just come and join us again. Um, thank you for joining in and listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Gloria, your life coach. <laughs>